Get your popcorn ready, fruit lovers, because I want to know who wants the juice! Hey, fruit lovers, welcome to the juice, the show where your favorite foods spill the tea. Whoops! Well, hopefully that comes out. <laughs> ah, this is my grandma's couch, orange! Nah, don't be such a crab apple. Pear, what's the question we're answering today? Hopefully it's good. I'm afraid it's anything but good, Orange. As a matter of fact, this question is downright evil. Uh, I'm sure it's just misunderstood. Here it is. Since we already know your favorite supper hero, what about your favorite super villain? I see we've got a true fan of the juice on our non-existent hands. For those who don't know, we did an episode on our favorite food-based superheroes a while back. But today it's time to pick our favorite, or should I say, flavor it, foodie super villains. So take a seat, take a sip, fruit lovers, cause I wanna know, what's the juice? I wanna go first. Little apple it is. Apparently we're going in reverse height order. <laughs> Uncalled for, orange. Anyway, I put a lot of thought into this. See, I used to think the best food super villain was Magneto. And then I started to wonder if it was Darth Tater. But in the end, I realized it's neither one of those. The best food supervillain is definitely Panos. Oh, that's a good one. If he ever completes the Infinity Omelet, we're all goners. Well, half of us are anyway. Hmm, there are five of us, so that means 2.5 of us will get vaporized. Then we know for sure Little Apple is one of them. He's the point five. <laughs> <laughs> your favorite, Marshy? I don't know. There's just something about his laugh that cracks me up. <laughs> the Yoker is a solid choice, but in the latest issue, Panos defeated the Yoker. Really? Oh, yeah. You don't make an infinity omelet without cracking a few eggs. Hold on. You're telling me that Panos is cooking up an infinity omelet and food supervillains are the ingredients? I told you he was evil. Wait, my favorite food supervillain is Barley Quinn. Tell me she's okay. Sorry, she's in the omelet. Well, what about Noki, Prince of Asgard, God of Mist Chef? Sorry, he's in there too. Seriously, he was gonna be my choice. How many ingredients are in this omelet? I don't know what to tell you, Pear. It's not called the finite omelet. Well, I know one ingredient that isn't in the infinity omelet. Yeah, what's that? My favorite food supervillain ever. Bane, oh. Yay, the mask is so fun. Dude. I know you look for pretty much any excuse to put your Bane mask on and talk like him, but he's not a food supervillain. Yeah, Bane's just a normal supervillain. Um, I, I meant Grain. Yes, the food supervillain Grain. Ah, oh, I am the superhero Grain. You just made that up. Oh, did I? Yes. Oh. Stop saying ah. ah! It is I, Panos. I've come for the one called Grain. I'd never heard of such a supervillain, but alas, it is my sacred purpose to collect them all. I am the one they call Grain. Oh! Dude, stop toying with Panos! Oh! Wait, Panos, think about everything going into this omelet. Eggs, barley, Noki. I mean, that's disgusting. Indeed, I am inedible. Oh wait. I forgot I don't have hands. Really, Panos? You scoured the universe for every ingredient, yet you forgot you can't even snap? What can I say? I'm a Pan, not a Mensa member. That's it. I want to change my answer. Panos is the worst. Agreed. Oh. Would you stop that? Hey there. Please take a chair. This episode of The Juice is beyond compare. Ugh, enough already, dude. The matter, pear. You know very well what the matter is, Orange. Dude, you've been listing off things that rhyme with my name all day long. Things that rhyme with pear, I do declare. <laughs> Relax, you'll run out of rhymes eventually. Just tell us about today's episode. Yeah, please share. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. So today, Extreme Kakarot wants to know if you could go anywhere on vacation, where would you go? Oh, you're saying we can go anywhere? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Seriously though, great question. Hope you're thirsty, fruit lovers, cause I wanna know, what's another rhyme for pear? <laughs> I'll kick things off by answering the vacation question. Whoa! Cory can't seem to keep his derriere on that chair over there. Orange! No, he's right. Whoa! <laughs> keep sliding off the couch like some kind of buttless wonder. Ugh. New butt arrives Tuesday. So I'm looking forward to then. Whoa! Just out of curiosity, how is it being delivered? By ground or by air? <laughs> oh my gosh, dude! Well, I know where I'd go on vacation, Madagascar, because it's as far away from Orange as I can get. Madagascar? I didn't know we could pick movies. Yeah. <laughs> Believe it or not, it was a place before it was a movie, Corey. Oh, sorry. I lost the geography side of my brain in the accident. You know, Pear, you could get further away from Orange than Madagascar. Really? I'm pretty sure it's on the other side of the world. Who said anything about staying on the world? Oh, oh. that's true. Pear, you could go to the moon. Or Mars, yay! Totally. Pear, you should get a one-way ticket to Pluto. Okay, easy. Now it just feels like you don't want me around. Hello? Now would be an appropriate time for someone to say, nah, we want you around, Pear, or something like that. <laughs> Where would you actually go? Jamaica, obviously. Little Apple, where would you go? Um, I don't want to say it. Uh, -huh. why don't you want to tell us? Is it some place you're embarrassed of? Is it somewhere secret? Is it something that rhymes with pear? Like Delaware? <laughs> Orange! No, it's nothing like that. It's just, okay, well, I visited 49 state capitals and I kind of want to take care of the 50th. So which one's left? <sighs> Little Rock, Arkansas. <laughs> See, this is why I didn't want to say it. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry, but that answer was straight up hilaire. Hilaire? Don't you mean hilarious? Nah, it's a new slang word I whipped up out of thin air. Stop inventing slang terms that rhyme with my name. That's fair. <laughs> Corey, where would you go? Well, mine's a bit weird, but you know that haystack over on the other side of the airport? Yeah? Why? There! That's where I go! Whoa! Whoops! Slipped out of my feet again. <laughs> so you'd go to a haystack next to the airport? I think Corey lost the half of his brain that makes sense. See, for me, it's not about the destination, it's the journey. And for me, it's all about how I get there. On my sweet hog, of course. No way! Are you saying you want to jump over an airport on your motorcycle? Heck yeah, it's never been done. Whoa, I was gonna pick Waikiki as my vacation spot because it sounds funny, but watching Corey jump over the airport sounds way better. That's not how the word better is pronounced. Nah, I like my way better. <laughs> <laughs> hey, can I change my answer too? Watching Corey jump his motorcycle sounds way more fun than Arkansas. Could we watch Cory jump over the airport right now? Wow, I wasn't expecting so much enthusiasm. Well, I do just happen to have my motorcycle and gear and ramp here, so... Do, do it, it! Do it! Do it! Do it! Do it! Okay. <laughs> wow, I guess this is happening. Open the studio skylight! Cory, if you don't make it, just know that you are like a half-brother to me. Thanks. That means a lot. Here we go. Three, two... One, and whoop, fell off my feet again. <laughs> Man, I could really use that new butt right about now. Um, guys? Well, fruit lovers, I was hoping to end today's episode on a more triumphant note, but I guess there'll be no such fanfare. <laughs> That's okay, Orange. It was a good episode anyway. Guys, I think the motorcycle is loose in the studio. Man, I was so ready for something exciting to happen. Such a bummer. A real bummer, indeed. That's not how it's pronounced and you know it. Also, there's a motorcycle loose in the studio. Really? Where? There. <laughs> what up, fruit lovers? Welcome to the juice. Today, I want to know two things and two things only. First, what's Marshmallow's gender? No chance, Orange. <laughs> nah, it was worth a shot. But the second thing I want to know is, what's the juice? Sis, 
Hit me with that sweet, sweet audience supply prompt. You got it, Orange. Today, Pony Central 2.0 asks, do you have any childhood stories you'd like to share with us? Do I ever? Oh man, I got tons of these things. Super embarrassing ones too. Yay! Let's hear one, Cory! Yeah, okay. The one time when we were in high school, Little Apple got mistaken for a first grader. <laughs> oh, come on! <laughs> well, that kind of makes sense that someone so short wouldn't fit into at high school. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it wasn't because of his size. It's because he did so poorly at the spelling bee. Corey! Oh, snap! Ah, Corey's exaggerating, you guys! It wasn't that bad! Bro, they kicked you out of the spelling bee before it even started. You spelled it spelling D on the poster. <laughs> oh! I'm not illiterate! I'm not okay! Oh! By the way, Corey, I think the audience wants us to tell childhood stories about ourselves! Really? Because I didn't see that specified in the prompt. Me neither! Let's hear another story, Corey! <laughs> okay, well, there was that one time that Little Apple got sued by Fox for doing a Marge Simpson impression. For the last time! I wasn't doing an impression! That's just my voice! Aw, it doesn't seem fair to sue him. He doesn't sound that much like Marge Simpson. No, that's the point! They sued him because the impression was so bad. Oh! oh. Ah, okay, great. Thanks for sharing, Corey. Now let's go around and hear other people's stories, please. I mean, I want to, but my stories aren't nearly as good as Corey's. Yeah, can I yield my time to Corey so he can tell more embarrassing stories about Little Apple? No! Sounds good to me. I want to hear more about Little Apple growing up. Or lack thereof. <laughs> <laughs> Heck yeah, okay. Hmm, which one to tell? Really, Corey? You only have half a brain and somehow you've managed to remember every embarrassing story about me? Well, I mean, yeah, they're seared into my memory, Little Apple. They're that embarrassing. Like, remember that time you piddled yourself? Oh wait, that was, that was yesterday. Oh! Ah, it wasn't my fault, okay? I got scared by something! Bro, it was your own shadow. Oh! They didn't need to know that, Cory! Oh no, little apple, what's that? Huh? Ah! <laughs> <laughs> I swear, you guys, shadows are scary! <laughs> they are! Oh my gosh, I swear! I'll tear this entire studio apart if we don't start telling other people's embarrassing stories! Okay, okay. Maybe we should give little apple a break. Thank you! Oh, I'll tell a childhood story! Once I met Steve Buscemi, and I accidentally called him Sleeve Buscemi. <laughs> oh, I was so embarrassing. Uh, I guess. Eh, I'm sorry, Marshy. That wasn't quite as good as Corey's stories. It's okay. I appreciate the constructive feedback. <laughs> <laughs> oh, here's one. I once sneezed at the lunch table, and some milk squirted straight out of my nostrils. Fifth, you don't have nostrils. Uh. I mean ears. You don't have ears either. Sis, are you making up a story? You caught me. I don't have any real life embarrassing childhood stories because I don't have any shame. Corey, I'd rather hear another one of your stories. Uh, agreed. Yes, agreed. All right, sounds like the yays have it. Okay, so get this. Little Apple had to use a booster seat in seventh grade to see over the top of his death. <laughs> oh. oh. Hey, wait a sec. So did you, Corey. You needed a booster seat because you didn't have a butt. L little Apple, how how could you say that about me? That really hurt my feelings. Oh, I, I'm sorry, Corey. That, that was so mean. You have no right. Oh my gosh, I thought we were swapping embarrassing stories. I got carried away. Ha, just playing with you. I totally needed a booster seat in middle school. Still do, in fact. Now, who wants to hear about the time Little Apple told everyone he had a girlfriend who lived in Canada? Yeah! yeah! No! No! Ah! Hey, hey, all you fruit lovers. Welcome back to the only talk show where the conversations flow like juice. Sis, what do we got on tap today? Well, Orange, James Meza wants to know what we'd wish for if a genie granted us three wishes. Great question, James. In fact, it's downright genius. <laughs> okay, gang, let's dive in, because I want to know, what's the juice? 
we obviously know what Little Apple's first wish would be. To be big! <laughs> Actually, no! My first and greatest wish would be that all of you could be less judgmental about my size! Well, I don't need to change a thing about myself! Oh, that's deep. Are we allowed to get that deep on this show? But sometimes I wish I could grow a mustache, so I'd probably wish to change that about myself. Who's next? Hold on. You wouldn't wish to be able to read? Oh my gosh, for the last time, I'm not illiterate, okay? Besides, I used up all my wishes already, and you can't go back and change them. Them's the rules. Uh, maybe Little Apple should wish to learn how to count, because that was only two wishes. It was? Oh, it totally was. <laughs> no, 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 no. Okay, I made a mistake. <laughs> yeah, I know how to count, you guys. <laughs> oh, no. ah, I so don't need this right now. <laughs> oh, oh, man. I'm crying here. Thanks for that, little apple. Hey, Orange, what would you wish for? Well, obviously, I'd wish for more wishes. No, you can't do that. That's a little unfair, don't you think? Well, you are the expert in what's little. <laughs> Fine, I'd wish for more genies. That's not fair either. Okay, I'd wish to become a genie. Orange, just answer the question. Okay, okay, geez. I just wish to get the extra wishes that little apple forgot to use because he can't count. <laughs> <laughs> well, I know exactly what I would choose. A red 1971 Camaro, a mansion on the beach, and a water hose. <laughs> huh? Why a water hose? To keep all the ladies away, of course. Hey, oh, hey! <coughs> Hang on! You seriously wouldn't use one of those wishes to change your voice back? Why would I want to change my voice back? Do people prefer my old voice? Why? What are people saying? <laughs> Say, I knew it! Okay, I want to change one of my wishes! Sorry, Grapefruit! Them's the rules! Oh, man! Uh, hey, sis, as a female, you don't really think my voice is that off-putting, do you? I don't really want to answer that, but I will say this. All three of my genie wishes would be that I never would have to hear Grapefruit's new voice ever again. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, it's a good voice, you guys. Hey, I'm walking here. So we haven't heard much from Lou yet. How about it, Lou? What do you suppose you'd wish for? Oh, I don't suppose. I know. Been there, done that, amigos. Lou, you're telling us you actually rubbed a lamp, a genie came out, and granted you three wishes? Right you are. I spent a lot of time in the greater Agrabah metropolitan area back in the 1960s. The 60s? How old are you? And also, Agrabah's a fictitious place. Uh... Well, I made three wishes, and the genie granted them all. First, I wished to be handsome. Oh. Um... And then, I wished to have an awesome voice. Smart. And then I wished to become a tick. Wait, you weren't a tick before? Heck no, I was a human. Wait, 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 bro. You were at the top of the food chain, and you decided to become an insect? You'd do the same thing if you kept getting probed by aliens all the time. It was getting exhausting, man. And I made the right call. They probe ticks way less often now. Can we move on to someone else now, please? There is no one else. Everyone's answered the question. Well, except for them. Huh? Oh no, not again! Blue, go away from the light! Ah! Ah! Oh! Wait, it's, it's Dave! Dave's cool. What's up, Dave? What's up, Blue? What's up? No, we cannot join in on this! What's up? No, no, stop it! This is hurting my brain! Welcome to The Juice, the show where you ask the questions and we squirt out answers. <laughs> Here, what do we got on tap today? I think you're gonna like this one, Orange. Pikachu's World asks, what prank would you do on your friends or family? I think a better question would be, what prank wouldn't I do on my friends and family? <laughs> but let's do it to it, friends, cause I wanna know, what's the juice? I'll begin, as I am a master of these so-called pranks, as you call them, Personally, I prefer to refer to mine as social experiments. <laughs> yeah. Yes, of course you do. If you doubt my mischievous nature, consider this. I set a social experiment in motion in this very studio moments before we began taping. The trap is set, and one of you will undoubtedly trigger it 
momentarily. That means any minute now. Question, is your social experiment the whoopee cushion I found under my couch cushion? Why, yes, uh, yes it is. Yeah, next time, maybe try putting it under someone who has a butt. It didn't work on me. That's fine, because I have a second social experiment in play that- You're talking about the whoopee cushion under me, aren't you? Why, yes. Yes, I am. Yeah, it might have worked on somebody bigger, but I don't weigh enough, so... Excuse me a moment. Can you grapefruit? Can't you do anything right? I have returned. Let us continue. You know, I actually pranked grapefruit about a year ago. Psh, you did not. I would never fall for a prank, I uh, uh, mean, a social experiment. No, I totally did. Listen, hey, you know that photo of your sister that you keep in your wallet? I am aware of the photo. I gaze upon it every day. Well, when you weren't looking, I replaced it with a Photoshop version with Steve Buscemi's face. Yeah, right. See? Um, Grapefruit, I think that's Steve Buscemi's face. It is not. For reference, here is another picture of my sister. Corey, did you Photoshop that picture? Sure didn't. Yeah, Grapefruit, I think your sister just looks like Steve Buscemi. You take that back. No, really, she does. See? Orange, that is so mean. Why would you Photoshop my sister's face onto a man's body like that? Um, this is just a normal picture of Steve Buscemi. I see. Excuse me again. Get it together, Grapefruit. <laughs> my sister is an angel, and this conversation is over. What break would you do, Orange? Oh, I'd probably distract someone with a lifelike dummy of me. Is that even a prank? Why would you do that? So I can jump scare them! Ah! <laughs> Pranked ya! Dude, not cool! Sorry, Pear, I apologize for the jump scare! Ah! <laughs> Dude, how many lifelike dummies do you have? Quite a few, actually. Hey, why isn't your mouth moving? Jump scare! Ah! <laughs> I can't believe I fell for that again! Um, I feel like I should tell you guys something. I also prepared a prank, but I kind of lost it. You lost it? Bro, how do you lose a prank? I mean, how do you lose a social experiment? By accidentally leaving the terrarium open. Oh, goodness. Hold on, a little apple. Is this actually the prank? You know, making us believe that there's some kind of creature lurking in the studio? Um, if I say yes, will you guys be less mad at me? Get the higher ground. It could be crawling around anywhere. More like slithering, but yeah. Ah! Oh, oh my gosh, I just saw it. The snake? Yes. Where? Under there! Underwear! Ha <laughs> ha! Gotcha, Orange! Made you say underwear! Oh! oh. 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 Pear just pranked Orange with his own joke! Ha <laughs> oh, this is legendary! Okay, okay, that was a pretty good one, Pear. You got me. Thanks, Orange. That means a lot. Wait, why isn't your mouth moved? Jump scare! Ah. Oh. 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 Pear! 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 I did it! This is it! This is the greatest day of my life! Oh. Oh, you couldn't just let me have this moment, could you? Ah! Hey there, fruit lovers! Hope you're as juiced for this episode as we are! <laughs> I mean, we got everybody here today! We got Sis! Hey! We got Marshmallow! Yay! We got Apple! It's been a while! See what I mean? Anyone who's anyone is here! Uh, Orange? You forgot to mention me. Yes, sir. We got everybody. <laughs> Marshy, hit me with today's question. You got it, Orange. Today, back with Kendall asks, what is your favorite name for a human? Yay! Well, our audience may want to know about names for humans, but as for me, I want to know, what's the juice? See, this is a really hard question to answer because it all depends on the human's last name. What do you mean? Well, you'll want to pick a first name that works well with the person's last name. Yeah, I see what you're saying. Like if a human's last name is Butts, you definitely don't want to pick Seymour as a first name. Oh. You don't? I feel like that's a perfect first name. <laughs> I just got it. Oh, God. Seymour Butts? That's brilliant. I mean, who comes up with this stuff? Probably the same guy who came up with Mike Roch, I'd imagine. Okay, Marshy, who would you pick? Well, 
<laughs> I just got it. My crotch. That's brilliant. I think Orange is lagging in real life. Never mind him. Marshy, please continue. It's so hard to choose a favorite name for a human. I just love all names so much. Even Gertrude? Sure. Even Greg? Absolutely. Even Clint? Love it. Even Craig? Uh, Marshy, what about the name Pterodactyl Jones? Okay, actually, I take that back. As I heard it coming out of my mouth, I realized just how cool it was. Hey, you know what I name a human? Human, that's what. Oh, how brave. What? I mean, come on. I gotta go buy Grapefruit over here. They should have to go by what they literally are, too. So if you could pick your own name, what would it be, Grapefruit? I don't know. Probably something awesome, like Laser, or Justice, or Bronco. I'm pretty sure those are all names of American gladiators. Fine, Turbo. That's an American gladiator. Thunder. Gladiator. Tank? There were literally two American gladiators named Tank. Okay, jeez. Titan, final answer. Dude, there were four American gladiators named Titan. Oh, come on! Hey, hey, Pear, what would you name a human? I don't know, probably Jeff? As always, Pear is the most boring person I know. Yeah, I was waffling about making the decision to leave him off the couch today, but this is vindication. Orange, what name would you give a human? Um, I'm not sure I want to say it. Uh, why not? Well, for one thing, it's an American gladiator. That's fine, just say it. You sure? Yes. You sure? Yes already, yes, yes! Saber! Oh, thank you. Jeez, was that really so- <laughs> I was wondering what happened here instead of pear. Now I know. Orange, maybe you should go with your second name choice. Saber didn't work out too well. Are you sure? Because my second choice is also the name of an American gladiator. Dude, nobody cares if it's a gladiator. Except when I say it, apparently. Just say it, Orange. Okay. Dynamite. Wait. Dynamite isn't the name of an American gladiator? Really? International gladiator, yes. Oh man, I guess I really blew it. <laughs> no! Howdy, howdy, Fruit Loops. Orange and the gang here with another episode of The Juice, the show that's got vitamin A's for all your vitamin Q's. <laughs> Sis, hit me with today's audience submitted prop. Whatever you say, Orange. Oh man, I walked smack dab into that one. <laughs> I knew that joke would be a hit. Hey, is their whole family like this? Yes. Okay, but seriously, today Max Explores asks, which couple do you ship the most? Easy question. Little Apple, obviously. Shipping rates are typically tied to a package's weight. Bro, they're not asking about shipping shipping. What the heck are y'all talking about? Like, say you wish two people were an item. That means you ship them. Despite the fact that I've been shipping packages and sailing ships most of my life, somehow I feel like I'm not getting this. Can somebody else go first? Hey, hey whatever floats your boat, Apple. All aboard, because today, Apple and I both want to know, what's the juice? Marshmallow, the answer's are entirely fluff, just like your body. May I go next? I ship myself in passion. <laughs> what? Is that a problem, Orange? <laughs> uh, no, no problem. Why would there be a problem? I don't like passion. Well, if Orange is gonna be all weird about it, I would accept my backup ship, myself, and Sis. Ew! Sis, someone else, don't really matter. I'm just remarkably desperate for a girlfriend at this point. Wow, just what every girl wants to hear. Yeah, and I'm gonna go ahead and ship myself and anyone but grapefruit. I get it. You don't wanna date me because my brain is intimidating. I get that a lot. That's not the reason, grapefruit. Oh, so it's because I'm too good looking? No. Oh my gosh, it's my teeth, isn't it? Is this because it's too straight? No, grapefruit. It's you. It's your personality. Interesting. That's one I've never gotten before. Really? Uh, that really stings a bit harder than those other reasons would have. Okay, everyone, new rule. No more shipping yourself, okay? That's not what the spirit of shipping is. Oh, I think I get it now. L l let me see if I got this straight. I could say ship Justin Bieber and Ariana Grande Latte. Exactly. <laughs> nice. <laughs> okay, yeah, this is fun. Hmm. So I guess the people I'd ship most would have to be my ex in the front bumper of a speeding bus. Uh, what? 
Oh, actually, can I change my answer? I'd ship my ex and a uh, black hole. Well, that's dark. <laughs> Bro, what did your ex do to you? She cheated on me. Twice. Oh. Once with the bumper of a bus and once with a black hole. I've made my peace with it and now I wish her all the best and just want her to be happy. Huh? Should we move along, Orange? Psh, why bother? We all know he'd ship. Him and passion. Who? Me? Yeah, bro. Everyone knows you're in love with her. Nah. Yeah. Nah. Yeah. Yeah. Ah, but that would be against rules. No shipping ourselves, remember? Oh, good point. But you're more than welcome to ship me, Orange. Not to belabor the point, but I've been cheated on multiple times. I could use all the help I can get. Hmm. You can do it. Just finish this phrase. I ship apple and... Knife! Knife? What are you talking about? We don't get along at all. In fact, the only times we hang out are when... Oh, you know what? I, I just got it. Ah! Oh, ship! <laughs> Welcome back to the juice, the talk show where the food gets to chew on something for once. Your questions. <laughs> Pear, hit us with today's oh-so-juicy prompt. You got it, Orange. Today, Andrew wants to know, what is the worst situation you've ever been in? Like, you mean besides having to sit on this couch downwind of Limburger cheese? Like, besides having to squeeze onto a couch with grapefruit and his oversized ego? Hey, don't respond to my clever insult with an equally clever retort. Okay, okay, let's calm down. Everyone here will get a chance to answer the question, even Grapefruit's ego. <laughs> <laughs> So fill us in and fill her up, gang, because I want to know, what's the juice? Okay, well, if I'm being real, the toughest situation I've had to deal with recently is my voice change. Dr. Bananas is still working on recreating his voice modulator ray, but in the meantime, fans have been leaving a lot of comments under our YouTube videos, and it's kind of stressing me out. Oh, no! The fans aren't being mean to you, are they? No, no, not at all. The complete opposite, actually. They say stuff like, Grapefruit, your new voice is so awesome. Grapefruit, you're so handsome. Grapefruit, I want to be exactly like you when I grow up. You know, the usual stuff. What? Dude, how is that a tough situation? Because it's like, I want to say thank you. You know, but I, I also don't want to lead people on. Like, I know they want to be like me, but no matter how hard they try in life, no matter how impossible it seems, they're never actually going to be quite so amazingly awesome as I am, you know? So yeah, it's, it's a really odd situation. Grapefruit, can you show me some of these comments? Uh, no. Why not? Because, no. That's fine, I'll pull them up myself. Oh dear. Yeah, I'm reading through these comments, Grapefruit, and pretty much everyone's saying the exact opposite of what uh, you're- Time to move on, uh, who's next? I'm awesome, end of story. Next person's turn. Marshy, what's the worst situation you've ever been in? Hmm, it would probably be the time I went to the pet store and I saw two baby kittens I wanted, but unfortunately, I only had enough money in my wallet for one of them. Oh, that is pretty tough. So what'd you do? I went home and got more money, and then I bought both of them. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> Not now, you two. I told you, I'm doing a show right now. <laughs> yeah, Marshy, that, uh, yeah. Sounds like a pretty tough situation, all right. The worst situation I've ever been in is definitely the time I was caught between The Rock and a hard place. Um, dude, I think you mean a rock and a hard place. No, it was definitely between The Rock and a hard place, see? Hmm, I wouldn't mind being caught between The Rock and a hard place. Yes, sir, I could smell what The Rock was cooking, and it was about to be me. Wait, hold on, are women actually into that kind of thing? You mean a ripped muscular physique? Yes, Grapefruit, many women are into that kind of thing. Hmm. Note to self, get a ripped muscular physique. So the worst situation I've ever encountered is the classic trolley dilemma. Yay, I love visual aids. <laughs> Bro, they want to know about situations you've actually encountered. You can't answer with an imaginary thought experiment. Why not? You answered with a bunch of imaginary YouTube comments about people liking your new voice. <laughs> They're not imaginary, and I'd show them to you if my phone was working. See, it's totally not working. How can I help you? Anyway, the trolley dilemma goes like this. There's a runaway trolley approaching a fork in the track. If nothing is done, it will take the right fork and kill five people. However, you are the switch man operating a lever that can send the trolley to the left. Or switch girl. There are switch girls too, I'll have you know. Or switch persons! Yay! 
Okay, you're the switch person. Point is, if you pull the lever and send the trolley to the left, it will only kill the one person. So you can either do something that will kill one person, or you can do nothing and five people will die. What do you do? Psh, easy. Just run over, grab the one person real quick, and place them over with the five others. Boom, all six people get killed. Problem solved. Grapefruit, the idea is to save their lives. What? Oh, snap. Did I just out myself as a psychopath again? Yes. Dang it, this always happens. Ask me again. I want to revise my answer. Okay, Grapefruit, what would you do? I would do what a regular non-psychopath would do, obviously. Which is what, exactly? Um... Hi, can I please trade seats with someone like yesterday? Why don't you trade with Little Apple? He was supposed to be sitting there anyway, and I'd much rather have him here and you absent. Yeah, where is Little Apple? He's probably just running a little late. <laughs> well, actually, Little Apple's absence has to do with my worst situation ever. See, earlier today, I was at work when I got a call from Little Apple saying he was feeling too sick to do the show today. Classic Little Apple, feeling under the weather. <laughs> so I found myself in a terrible position. Should I help my friend come on today's show and become super famous from Lobby Clever Retorts of this psychopath over here? Or should I stay at work and do my job, which is actually pretty important. That is a tough situation. Out of curiosity, where do you work, Limburger? I'm a railroad switch girl. Wait, you mean you pull the lever that steers trolley cars down one track or another? Just like in Pear's thought experiment. Yeah, they hired me because I can do it while standing really far away from everyone. Anyway, after thinking long and hard about it, I decided to come here instead of pulling the lever. And we're so glad you did! Yay! Well, assuming you didn't put five people's lives in danger. <laughs> Welcome back to The Juice, the tastiest talk show around. Today, I want to know one thing and one thing only. Who the heck is that? Me? Oh, hey, I'm Unsable Salt. <laughs> Sup? Um, where's Pear? Or Sis. I was kind of hoping Sis would be sitting next to me on the couch today. Or just any day, really. Hey, I don't know, man. I got the call. They said, come to The Juice, man. I said, okay, man. And then I... Whoa, you guys hear that? What? No! It's like a voice, man. It's telling me to do things, man. Whoa, where am I? How'd I get here? Whoa. Who is that, a grapefruit? I love grapefruit. Is anyone else gonna eat that? <laughs> okay, who wants to trade seats? Not it! Nope! No, thank you! Yay! Is, is he drooling? His mouth is probably watering over today's juicy prompt. What do you got on tap today, little apple? Roblox Gaming asks, if you could become a human for 24 hours, what would you do? Do humans have teeth? Yeah. Cool. Well, in that case, I'd bite into a grapefruit, man. <laughs> Ugh, everyone answer the question, please. Sooner we answer, the sooner I can leave. You heard him, friends. Grapefruit and I want to know, who wants the juice? If I was a human, I'd hang out with my friends and go on exciting adventures. Yeah. <laughs> Marshy, we do that every day as foods. If I was a human, I'd use my hand to pick up a knife, man. And then I'd just start stabbing people, man. Give those humans a taste of what we foods have been experiencing for years, man. I've lost so many friends. My buddy Pepper got ground up, chewed around, then sneezed out into a tissue, man. The humans must pay for what they put us through, man. I don't disagree with unstable salt quite as much as I probably should. Humans are the worst. We killed a lot of our friends over the years. See, man? Now you're thinking clear, man. Now, let me take a bite, man. One little bite. <laughs> Back off, weirdo. Hey, man, I'm not a weirdo. I'm unstable. You know what I'd do if I was human? I'd fly. You mean, in an airplane? No, I'd just fly around like Superman. Bro, Superman isn't real. I mean, technically, he's not even human. Whoa, does Little Apple seriously think humans can fly? How humanulating. <laughs> okay, even I know that one was a stretch, man. Okay, so humans can't fly, but they can still do cool stuff like breathe underwater, so that's what I do. Bro, I gotta ask, have you ever seen a human? Are you telling me Aquaman isn't real either? So what the heck makes humans so great? Are they the fastest runners? No, cheetahs are way faster. Do humans have the biggest brains or the biggest bodies? 
Nah, I believe elephants got them beat in both categories. So what good are they? Well, forget being a human. I want to be a duck. A duck? <laughs> a duck. They can fly. They can swim. They can walk on land. Ducks are friggin' awesome compared to humans. I don't know, little apple. That sounds like a quackpot theory to me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that was pretty good, man. <laughs> I said back off. Okay, jeez, man. You know, I'll tell you what I'd do if I was a human for 24 hours. Shoot my shot with Zendaya. You really think she'd be into you? Well, she's never dated any citrus fruit, so being human would only help my chances. If I was human for a day, I'd probably spend the whole time touching my tongue to my new, exciting things. My nose, my ears, my eyebrows, my elbows, the side of Little Apple's face. <laughs> orange! <laughs> I'm with you, Orange. I'd definitely see if I could touch my tongue to Zendaya's tongue. Grapefruit, you're gross. There is no scenario, fictitious or otherwise, in which you have a shot at Zendaya. Then what do you know? You chose to be a duck, bro. <laughs> so true, man. Let me have a little tiny bite. Back off. Why, because I'm bothering you, man? Yeah, but also because there's a knife headed directly where you stand. Huh? Ah! Wow, talk about assault. <laughs> <laughs> avenge me, guys! Avenge me! Yeah, I don't think I'm gonna avenge him. No way! I mean, you guys saw. He never listened to me, even though I kept telling him to step off, step off! I think it's back! Okay, thank you, Mr. Technicality. Yes, I kept saying back off, back off. No! It's back! Huh? Ah! <laughs> Fruity Toots, Orange and the Juice crew here with another super succulent episode to sink your teeth into. Pear, what do we got on tap? Today, Colbot100 asks, what is your favorite movie and why? Ooh, a movie question. How timely. Just the other day, my buddy got fired from his job at the movie theater. Whoa, really? Why's that? He forgot to show up. <laughs> uh... Nah, I'm just block busting your balls. Get your popcorn ready, fruit lovers, because I want to know who wants the juice. I shall begin. My favorite movie of all time, perhaps more correctly referred to as film, is La Pompalamoose Functions. La Pompalamoose? La Pompalamoose Functions. Come on, you never heard of it? It's a semi autobiographical student film I made back in art school. Oh, and when you know it, I happen to have a copy of it right here. You care to watch it? Nope. Not at all. And play. Ah! Well, what do you think? <coughs> well, it was definitely something. My favorite part was the butterfly! Yay! The one that burst into flame and died? It was like 10 seconds long! Then why did it feel like 10 hours? Oh! oh. Probably because everything seems long when you're that short. Oh! oh. Little apples in shambles! Yay! <laughs> <laughs> well, my favorite movies are nothing like grapefruits. I like them already, Orange. Mm. Yeah, I pretty much like all of the top grossing movies of all time. Okay, so you're saying you like the movies that make the most money, like Avatar, Avengers Endgame, Jurassic World. Oh, um, I think I misunderstood what grossing meant. I like movies like Spider-Man, Fart From Home, and Forrest Dump. Oh my gosh. I've never heard of those movies. Really? You've never seen Shrek the Turd? Nope. Independence and Stay? Dude. Pirates of the Caribbeans for dinner? Orange! Lethal Weapon Poo? Orange! Oh, actually, I think I have seen Lethal Weapon Poo. Is that the one where they have diplostatic feces? That's the one! <laughs> oh, come on! Okay, fine. Then tell us, Pear, what's your favorite movie? Ahem. <clears throat> well, many critics would say that the greatest film is Citizen Kane, and I would have to agree <laughs> What? Why are you booing me? Boo! Citizen Kane is one of the greatest- Boo! 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 Boring choice! Boo! It's not boring! Boo! 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 But the symbolism! Boo! Yay! It is Boo! a masterful film! The cinematography! Ah, screw you guys! We won, cause we shouted the loudest! Yay! Marshy, what's your favorite movie? Sophie's Choice and 
Marshmallow. Requiem for a dream and... Marshmallow. Yes, Pear? Just out of curiosity, have you, um, finished any of these movies? Well, no. Movies are so long, and I usually fall asleep before the end. Why do you ask? Ah, yeah, no reason. Well, that's nice to hear, because I never saw the ending of Gallipoli, but I'm sure the ending is every bit as hilarious as the title is. Gallipoli! <laughs> Gallipoli, Gallipoli, Gallipoli! <laughs> oh, my gosh. Wait, so is that it? Has everyone answered now? Oh, little Apple hasn't gone yet. But he's easy to overlook. <laughs> Orange! So what's your favorite movie, Little Apple? Well, right now, it's gotta be La Bodily Functions. La Bodily Functions? I've never heard of it. It just came out, like, two minutes ago. I found it on YouTube. Apparently it's a spoof of Grapefruit student film. Should we watch it? Yes! yes. No. And play! Yeah, what up, douche nation? It's La Bodily Functions. Ah, bro, my eyes. The fart gas got right in my eyes, bro. Somebody order a butt, turfly. Yeah. Like and fart scribe, you wieners. <laughs> yeah. Now that version was a real gas. <laughs> oh, very funny. You have to be like four semesters of grad school to edit that film. That's kind of sad. Because apparently it took this YouTuber two minutes to edit his version. Seriously? What do you edit it on, Premiere? Final Cut? Final Butt! <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's it. This episode is over. Can we watch the ending again? Yeah, that was hilarious. Like and fart scribe, you wiener. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs>